Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today in this video, uh, I wanted to kind of go ahead and show you guys my gearing process for my life base Righteous Fire character. And primarily, honestly, for really any build that plays Righteous Fire as its main damage source. Whether you're doing something with RF Incinerate, RF Scorching Ray, as long as you're actively using Righteous Fire to stand on top of targets, uh, this will pretty much work for you. If you're using it just as like a support for other things, like if you're using, say, for example, Scorching Ray um, just to use RF as the damage multiplier, this is not really going to pertain to you. Anyway, though, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So this is going to pretty much cover you from level 20 up until pretty much 99, or however far you decide to go. I mean, I guess 100 actually, technically, Kappa. All right, so let's start off with the basics. So number one, I'm going to go ahead and start off with recommended chess pieces. Now note that in this video, I am not going to go ahead and explain like every single one. Uh, I can't go through every single chess piece. This is just going to be what I recommend. Alternatively, if you do not want to, you don't have to use any item on this list. None of it is required. So my number one uh, thing for low level is I would definitely say Wall of Brambles is probably going to be your best bet as you are playing a Marauder and you can easily get armor scaling. This chest piece will pretty much make you invulnerable to any type of physical damage up until probably like level 50 or 60. The flat amount of armor that you get from this literally will make you immortal um, unless of course you're trying to tank like Vol Slams or Malachi Slams etc. But any type of little hit will be completely mitigated off of this while leveling. Um, alternatively if you cannot get something like this just use like a life based chest. Uh, it doesn't have to have anything special on it. Personally, um, I used an Ambu's Charge at like level 70. It would have been better to just use it right away at level 40. I actually used Ambu's Charge up until I got a Combs Heart. There are other chess pieces that you can use as well, which I'm going to go ahead and display for you guys here in a second. So another option is to use a Carcass. Uh, Carcass gives you 70 max life along with 50 area damage. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you any armor, uh, but it still gives you all res and life pretty much like an Ambu's Charge. Another chess piece that you can use is a Belly of the Beast. Uh, belly of the Beast should give you uh, quite a bit of HP and some all resist. Unfortunately, Belly of the Beast is ridiculously expensive, and I would personally just recommend for you to use like, I don't know, just simply like a, uh, a high life chess piece over a Belly of the Beast. Now, one cool thing about Ambu's Charge is that it also gives you 2% life regeneration per second if you have been hit recently, which is pretty much all the time. Um, so that's why I kind of I kind of recommend Ambu's. And ultimately, you are going to be going for a Combs Heart. Um, so I have prioritized, in my opinion, uh, some of like the higher gear down towards the bottom and the lower gear up towards the top. But it doesn't mean like the weaker gear is at the top. It's just kind of sorted by level requirement. So ultimately, I would go with the Combs Heart. Next up is going to be shields. Uh, starting off all the way from level 7, you can get yourself a spring leaf. This is really good for leveling up with Righteous Fire because you get 3% life regen per second. Um, and then the life regen per second on low life. I know this kind of seems like a meme, but when you're leveling up, the chances of you hitting low life just based off stupid stuff does occur. And this will pretty much prevent you from degening if you were to hit low life. So say you're, you know, you were at low life for one second. This will pretty much stop that, that degen for one second, assuming that's how much you need, uh, which will give you time to react to hit a potion or something. Another alternative shield to leveling is actually called the Oak, which would give you up to 150 flat life. Now this is a prophecy, so it is going to be a little bit expensive, uh, but it is something if you just kind of want to go the extra mile. Now another shield that you can decide to use around level 59 is called a Saffles Frame. Saffles Frame gives you 4 to all max res, so technically it does give you more like mitigation uh, you know, against Righteous Fire than like the Oak and a Spring Leaf. Uh, one thing to note about the Oak Shield is that the flat life is going to make it very hard to level with if you are trying to balance your life pool off of life flasks. If it, you're dealing with just raw regeneration, it's irrelevant because it's based off your max health. Now the one issue with Saffle's Frame is that you will lose all of your block chance, but you can still get quite a bit of armor, so it's not really too much of an issue. Um, but definitely make sure you're aware of losing all of your block chance while using a Saffle's Frame. Things like Rumi's Concoction become really good as well when you do this. And the reason why I say that is because the block chance gets converted to spell block, your block gets converted to spell block, and then the Rumi's block is, well, the Rumi spell block is added to your spell block. Um, so that makes for a pretty interesting combination. 
Ultimately though, I would recommend going for the Rise of the Phoenix, uh, just because it gives so much mitigation uh, towards your own Righteous Fire, along with just 8 max fire res honestly makes it so fire damage is negligible. Uh, the only things that's really hurt me with damage with fire off the top of my head is like, Adziri's regular flame blast might tap me for like 1.5 to 2k. Uh, haven't touched uh, Adziri's double flame blast. Anything on Uber, don't try to face tank. Because remember, once you start fighting bosses that use penetration, um, your max fire is, is not nearly as strong. One other interesting thing that I noticed is um, the boss in Death and Taxes, who does the flame blast there, his flame blast actually hit me more damage than Adziri's, so that's one thing to note as well with the max fire res. Although it is interesting to say that the Oak Shield will give you quite a bit more damage over Rise of the Phoenix just because of the 150 flat life. Now, previously you could also use like a Leo crafted shield, but Leo only crafts to 5% uh, reduced damage taken over time now, which is unfortunate. So moving on to your weapons, there are quite a few different weapons that you can use. Uh, I decided to showcase three of them. So right now here, I have my number one recommended weapon, which is a Bright Beak. Now this is probably the number one most asked question is why do I run a Bright Beak at level 93? And the reason why is it's very simple. It gives me great attack speed. Attack speed is very important if you want to care about clear speed so that you can quickly traverse from pack one to pack two. It also gives a little bit of crit right on the base, which means that it's easier for me to proc elemental overload. Along with, it gives fire and lightning resistance. Resistances is never bad to get because the more resistance you get, the easier it becomes if you decide to essence craft your gear or go heavy into your jewels, which we'll talk about a little further. The one downside to Bright Beak is it gives you absolutely no damage and in any type of way, with the exception of having great uptime on elemental overload. So if you decide that you wanna use something else, there is a really good wand called an Ash Collar, but I'm not going to show it here because you can't shield charge with it, so I'm going to stay away from those. You can simply pick up a weapon like this, which for example has fire damage and elemental damage. You can probably find weapons like this for a couple chaos on poe.trade. They're usually all over the place. Now, another weapon you can use, uh, let me go ahead and pull it up here, is a Doriani's Catalyst. Doriani's Catalyst is probably one of the more favored items for Righteous Fire, uh, along with a Dune Kubiari. So if you look at what um, Doriani's gives you, is the main thing we're looking at is the 132% elemental damage roll that we can get, along with the 15% attack speed, which is nice, and then it has the okay crit, uh, which isn't really too bad at all. You know, I had these opened and I don't know what happened to them. So Dune Kubiari is another one that people like to go after. It gives 32% elemental damage. It gives you up to 70 strength, which makes it the essential number one weapon uh, from what I know of right now for flat life, unless you want to use like a Lavinia's Wisdom. Uh, I don't even think that's better than this though. My biggest issue with Dune is that it doesn't give any attack speed and that's why I'll probably never use it. It does, however, give the 1% increased damage per 8 strength in main hand, and I believe people said that, I don't know the math on it, if you get like up 5, five to 700, maybe 700 plus strength, it becomes stronger than a Doriani's. Um, you guys can just do that yourself to figure out exactly how much it is. Personally, I just stay away from Dune. I ended up crafting myself a weapon like this, which gives me, I believe, is it 115% increased damage over time with a little bit of flat accuracy, which doesn't make much of a difference, but it does help with shield charge, and 21% increased attack speed, uh, which is better than a Doriani's for my shield charge. So I'm actually, I might swap over to this instead of a Bright Beak, and this has to be crafted on an item level 84 weapon if you want to get the highest fire damage roll possible. This is actually a very bad fire damage roll. I think fire damage rolls up to 79, and then you can roll a hybrid, uh, and then you can get burn damage, and then you can Leo craft uh, damage over time. So there's like crazy potential from crafting a mace. It's just very, very rare to get. Um, and the only important things again would be the implicit for Ellie damage and the item level for hitting the high tier mods. Okay, so with weapons out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and move on to gloves. Now, personally, I used these mesh gloves up until like level 75. Um, all I used was the, uh, I used the new currency, actually, I can show you guys over here that I didn't think about showing. I used a orb of binding, which upgrades a normal item into a rare item with up to four linked sockets. So by slamming that, I got my four linked sockets and was pretty much good to go with Righteous Fire. <clears throat> um, one thing to, uh, I guess to 
to remember is with Righteous Fire for leveling, you're going to need three blues on your pieces of gear. So make sure you're doing it on like an armor ES base or even just a pure ES base because it does make a big difference. There are also, and of course you don't have to do it on gloves for leveling. You can put it on anything you want. Um, mine just happened to be on gloves for leveling. You can use a Medjinord's Vice, which would give 2% life regen per second with 400 strength. Um, I didn't really think about this, but this I, I would say is a pretty nice option for leveling as well. Um, then I decided to move on to my Titan Gauntlets, which essentially just give me life, armor, strength, resistance. And then I finally decided to move on to my next pair, which basically is these gloves right here. These are the same thing. These are just better, which give me 16% more attack and cast speed, uh, along with a really high strength roll um, and a really high dex roll with some decent life. Now that's pretty much just used for shield charging very quickly. And that is essence crafted with an essence of horror, which are sorry, insanity, which you can see right here. There's going to be four essences as well that we're going to go over, which is going to be Essence of Insanity, Essence of Horror, Essence of Delirium, and Essence of Anger. And that's going to be basically coming up next here. So this is kind of like my end game goal. You don't have to do this in any type of way. This doesn't affect your damage in any type of way. It just pretty much adds to your clear speed. Uh, so if you wanted to go ahead and Delirium cra uh, craft your gloves instead, that's totally an option as well. So moving on to Helmets. We've got the skull head, which I picked up really early on. It pretty much is just like a gold rim, but it's a shitty version of a gold rim, but it gives you life. So I was like, okay. So it gave me life uh, along with some all res, and I pretty much used this up until like, I don't even know, like 70. But some other options you can use is like a Hrimnor's Resolve. Hrimnor's gives you flat life along with some cold resistance and fire damage, which is really cool. That increased fire damage is quite nice. Vol's Vision is pretty good as well. Uh, Vol's Vision is a pretty nice option because you get Fire Resist, Chaos Resist, uh, and I believe you get, you can go quite a bit higher than max, let me, let me actually see this, Vol's Vision, POV. I think it's 14% max life, 12, Vol's Vision rolls up to 12% increased maximum life if no worn items are corrupted, so it's not really too bad of a piece at all, that's about 300 life onto my character right now. Um, but I don't really recommend it unless you really, really need that life regen per second. Uh, ultimately, I ended up crafting myself a Essence Crafted Helmet with an Essence of Horror, which gives me the 30% more elemental damage. Now, I got pretty lucky on this when I was crafting it, and I hit a hybrid life roll, and then got to craft a life roll on top of that. And for the ultimate, like, best results, ideally you want to craft this on a higher base armor, um, same thing with your gloves. You pretty much need to just look up the PoE wiki and just look at the highest armor base. So if we were to look at, I think for helmets, it's either a Royal Burgonet or an Eternal Burgonet. And gloves, I believe, are Titan Gauntlets. Uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference. You're not really scaling your armor too much. Like this isn't the proper base, but you're not really looking for that. You're mainly looking for proper stats. So <clears throat> this is pretty much what I came to. And if you Essence Craft your helmet with Horror, you're able to then Essence Craft your gloves with insanity uh, opposed to doing delirium here then you couldn't do that here so that's the one benefit of doing that for boots uh, boots are quite simple i'm pretty sure i actually used wanderlust all the way up until i got my calms roots uh, but i'd highly recommend the wanderlust cannot be frozen means you can yolo click every strong box you never have to worry about getting frozen uh, then you've got the next upgrade which i pretty much went to i didn't actually go to these boots i went to like a pair of boots with like 70 life and uh, movement speed and um, you pretty much will just use up those up until you get a Calm's Roots. Now, in terms of Calm's Roots for the Enchant, um, the Enchant, you definitely want to get 2% life regen uh, when you are hit. Well, it's 2% increased life regen per second if you have been hit recently, so for 4 seconds. And it also gives you mana back, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, that is definitely your best in slot Enchant. So you do not want to corrupt these because you want to make sure you can actually acquire that. I have found no reason to ever really drop these. I honestly really love what they give. Cannot be knocked back as irrelevant, but you get immunity to chill, immunity to temporal chains, uh, immunity to stun, and immunity to freeze all within these boots, along with 200 base life. Um, the only thing I could really think about is if you want to go after Shaper or like Guardians, you can potentially drop these boots, fit in a Forling Scorching Ray into some rare boots, and you're good to go. Uh, but that's not really the goal for me. As for belts, I'm personally using a Belt of Deceiver, but something else you can use instead uh, would be like a high-crafted life belt. 
So a leather belt with a strength roll on top of a, a high life roll. And then primarily probably like chaos resist because we don't really pick up much of that in our builds uh, since we are essence crafting quite a bit of our gear. Now the one reason why we use Belt of the Deceiver is because if you hold Alt, you can see the Intimidation effect, which Intimidated enemies take 10% increased damage. Now increases can work as multipliers if you see the word take in front of it. So vulnerability makes targets take an increased amount of physical and damage over time. Shock makes targets take an increased amount of damage you deal a certain amount of damage. So make sure you really pay attention to the wording in Path of Exile because it can be very tricky. All right, in terms of rings, I personally used Pyre rings up until um, I got my rare two stones. If you don't want to use Pyres because you want some more sustain, you can use Kikazaru's because they give you really good life regen. Uh, Pyre is pretty good though because it, just, it gives you so much damn burn damage, up to 80% increased burn damage. So moving on to the next one, I ended up getting two rings that looked similar to this, uh, pretty much high life with resistances. Um, whenever I felt that I got enough resistance, I decided to move on to the next part, which was essentially getting my Armageddon Horal Opal Ring. So my Opal Ring, essentially when you're crafting your Opal Rings, you want to use an Essence of Anger on them. Uh, whether you use Screaming or Shrieking or I think Deafening, I don't know what the highest tier is, is entirely up to you. Remember that any tier above Screaming counts as a Chaos Orb, so you do not need to Scour it. Screaming and below, you are going to need to use a Scour, and then you basically Alk it. Any of the, the rare essences, like Insanity, uh, Delirium, Horror, etc., basic already count as a Chaos Orb. You don't have to worry about that. So the goal in these rings on what you're looking for is your Fire Damage roll, which you're going to get from your Essence, along with the Implicit Fire or Elemental Damage roll, so you can get up to like 60% in total. And then you want to go after things like a strength roll or a high life roll. I thought I was on D&D. Feels bad, man. Okay. So this would be your ultimate goal, and you kind of want to use two of these. Now, moving on to your amulets, I went with a shaper seed and used a shaper seed up until the ability or availability to use a marble amulet. Uh, you can alternatively use a Nagamu's Tiki, which gives you 50% increased fire damage, a little bit of life, some fire resistance, and the life regen on low life, but I don't really think that's too relevant. Blood Grip is pretty cool because Blood Grip, or Blood Grip is a marble amulet, except it's like one chaos where marble amulets are much more expensive. Remember, opal rings are very expensive as well. Um, and it's not too bad. It gives you life. It gives you flat regen, which is irrelevant. Uh, it gives you... Increased life recovery from flasks, but I don't actually use any life flasks in my builds later on. But just overall, it's not too bad of an amulet. You mainly want it because of the life regen implicit. Once you're able to afford a better amulet, go ahead and try to essence craft a marble amulet like this, which would have the fire damage implicit, or will fire damage with the life regen implicit, with some life and then any type of resistance that or resistances you desire. Again, getting a tier one strength roll would be prime or optimal, but it's very hard to get these while essence crafting. Moving on to jewels, uh, your jewels pretty much all want to look, I mean, quite similar. Uh, you want increased life on every single jewel that you can get, if, especially if you're playing on hardcore. And after you get your increased life, you want to go ahead and pick some type of damage, multi or some type of damage like fire damage, area damage, increased damage, damage over time, burning damage, burn damage being number one because it has the highest roll up to 20%. So jewel number one has max life area damage. Jewel two has fire damage, max life chaos res. Uh, jewel three has max life and a ton of resistance. Jewel four has max life Ellie res burn damage. Jewel five has increased damage, max life burn damage. Jewel six has maximum life, increased burn damage, fire and cold res. Now there is another jewel that you can actually use, uh, which is like a placeholder jewel. It's called an anatomical knowledge. Um, and they're pretty okay because they roll 1% max life higher than a normal jewel and you get maximum life per 3 intelligence. A lot of Righteous Fire, if not almost every Righteous Fire build does pick up Elemental Equilibrium. So Socketing and Anatomical Knowledge right here is really not too bad to use. Okay. Next up, let's jump into our flasks. So for leveling up, I would recommend that you either use a 
life flask with increased charges or a life flask with um, movement speed. The movement speed is really cool because you're going to have your life flask regening you the entire time. So you get the increased movement speed boost, kind of like a Quicksilver, except it comes from your life flask. And then alongside those as a main, main, main thing primary, always have some type of instant flask, whether it's a seething or a bubbling, because you never know when burst damage is going to happen. Always have this ready because your, your health is really not going to regenerate too much while you're leveling. Once you get your, um, your war cry, this kind of is not really as important because your war cry will be able to heal you. You can also roll like reduced amount of charges used. That's pretty good. There's a couple different ways you can play around with your life flasks, but I personally don't use them anymore. So my current life or uh, my current utility flask setup goes as follows, and I pretty much rank them in order of importance. Granite, uh, granite's okay. It doesn't really help too much with the mitigating larger hits, but it helps with mitigating things in general. Uh, armor has always been kind of complicated to explain. I personally never really figured out exactly too much how it worked. Um, armor gives you percent physical mitigation, but the percentage physical mitigation given to you is not really as accurate as it as it's displayed uh, because larger hits don't really care too much about your armor and larger hits require raw physical mitigation like endurance charges, basalt flask, arctic armor, etc. So next up would be my basalt flask. Basalt flask did get nerfed from 20% to 15%, so you don't really have to use it. You're free to drop this for whatever you'd like if you want. But the next three flasks I'd recommend you get as soon as you can, which would be a sulfur flask because it gives you consecrated ground, which gives you the increased damage along with the, um, the like, what is it, 4% life regen per second, 5% life regen per second from consecrated ground. It's pretty huge. Going into a witch fire, which witch fire is very important because you get the increased damage and you get free vulnerability so you don't have to worry about it with your links and your gear. And then next up would be a ruby flask, which is your primary flask. This should be up pretty much at all times, it gives you maximum fire resistance um, and always keeps you topped off and healed. So some of the last things is I'm just going to go over my quality gems in order of importance. Uh, critical strikes doesn't really matter that much. It's for your shield charts to keep up elemental overload. Conk effect that don't even have quality because this is only when you swap in for bosses. Uh, Ink AoE I've got qualityed here. Elemental focus because elemental focus is always on. Burn damage is always on. Uh, fortify. Fortify is really important because it gives you fortify duration, which I think is very important just in general because if your fortify falls off and you get slapped, you could die because <laughs> that's the unfortunate thing. It's not really like crazy important. It's just like a personal choice I have. And then number one being your faster attacks for the increased attack speed. So once you kind of have your character going, I kind of want to go ahead and go in like order of importance of what you should get first. So you're a little newbie. You just started out. You've got shit gear, right? So number one is you want to aim for your Rise of the Phoenix as soon as you can. This is the number one way to mitigate the damage of your Righteous Fire. Um, it is going to be like the most important thing for you to get because it gets your character started essentially. And you know, you can pretty much jump into your yellow tier maps and you're good to go. Uh, obviously your flash setup is going to be pretty easy. Uh, it's not really too difficult to get this set up. So let's just put these on. Okay. Um, so from personal preference, I would say next up, you want to get a, basically an essence craft in your helmet. Uh, it's important to essence craft your helmet because this is where your big boy damage comes from, right? This is essentially like your fatty, uh, 30% more damage. So this is like super, super important. I would put those in terms of importance, kind of on the same level with getting your Calm's roots and your horror helm. Calm's Roots are probably going to be way cheaper, so you might want to just pick them up first. But these are really, really, really good as well. Um, simply because they give you all the immunities as explained before. Your weapon is pretty easy to acquire. It shouldn't really cost you that much. So Bright Beak is going to be given pretty much right away. If you don't have the Bright Beak, remember you can just use one of the basic weapons. It's not too much of a big deal. So next up would be your chest piece, um, which would be a Combs Heart. But before you get the Combs Heart... Um, I would definitely say, well, I guess Belt of the Deceiver. This, this is also like a number one primary thing. It doesn't really cost that much. It's like three chaos, so this should be a given already. Uh, let's see. Before you get the Combs Heart, you definitely would want like a Marble Amulet on here, uh, which would, this would cost one chaos as well. What else would we have to swap in? Your rings would pretty much just be like a regular ring here and a Pyre ring here. 
Let's just put on the Ambu's Charge and our regular gloves. All right, there, our character's pretty much geared here. So before you get your Combs Heart, it's way easier to just tag in and get a Witchfire. I'd also recommend for you to get pretty much all of your jewels set before you rush for your Combs Heart as well. Um, don't spend like 50 chaos on a jewel if you you know are saving for a combs heart But doing like little trades here and here like here and there for like 10 chaos to get your jewels set up Is pretty fucking important because they make a huge damage part with your build Also getting resistances on your jewels makes it so much easier for you to essence craft um, Which is another really important part So after you've got that set up, I would recommend going for the combs heart now me personally I didn't actually, I didn't actually like get any of my opal rings until I got my combs heart. So that's when opal ring one kind of comes in. And after I got my opal rings, I decided to get my essence crafted gloves. Yes, perfect. And that for the most part, and then also the amulet came along with that, was how I geared my character um, to the point where he is right now and i guess the last thing which i didn't really mention uh, that i've been thinking about doing right now is getting a level three in power with a 21 purity of fire which will give you an extra plus one max fire is that pretty much concludes everything guys <laughs> and no more hidden spoilers so hope you guys enjoyed the video i know it was a lengthy one i do apologize but i tried to explain literally everything that i could for you guys so if you like the video please feel free to like share and subscribe and remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.